Hello and a warm welcome back to my little YouTube channel. This video is about how to use your cell phone to do some chemistry if you are on home-based learning. Underneath this video is a beautiful button called subscribe, like, hit those two now, thank you. And also you will find a link to this uh, sheet which I have set up for the purposes of this video. The experiment is very simple, it's meant to be done at home. We can buy uh, blue food dye from any uh, household supply. Uh, water you can take from the tap, it does not have to be distilled. Uh, sodium carbonate, you can buy that from any hardware store, maybe your school will give you some. And finally 3% hydrogen peroxide is very dilute and is the approximate strength of hydrogen peroxide you can get from the chemist for earwax removal. Okay. Uh, temperature probes, your school may give you some of those. The rest of it is up to uh, your phones and your recording prowess, which I'm sure you're very good at that, uh, to come up with a very strong potential internal assessment. Let's have a look at how we physically do this. Let's go. Today we're going to have a look at how we can use our cell phone here to do some chemistry at home, should we be on a stay at home or home based learning. The first thing we need to do is to have a look at the spreadsheet underneath this video. Just click on the link below while you're there, hit subscribe and the like, thank you very much indeed. And have a cell phone ready. On your cell phone, you should go to the app store and you should download the colorimeter application. So I can show you that on my phone, colorimeter. You find that in the app store in there. And what that does, that gives you a value of red, green, and blue parts of the spectrum in quantified units. So come in here, let's have a look. So in here, as you can see from the spreadsheet, I have a 100 cm cubed of water, 10 cm cubed of sodium carbonate, 10 cm cubed of hydrogen peroxide, at a temperature of 298K, and I've got the initial red value of 186. Now that will be slightly different to what I get now, but if we can just focus onto the camera here. When I put the camera onto the red, notice I'm angling the camera to get to the red portion of this card, which is at the back. I can see that the red here is stable at about 211, 211. So what I'm going to do I take a photograph of that, and when I go into my history, that will tell me my baseline background value for red. Okay, now what I need to do is go back to my camera, put my camera onto the side of the beaker. Make sure that your camera lens is actually focusing onto the solution. So this is my water, sodium carbonate, hydrogen peroxide. I'm just taking from the shelf, blue food dye. It's not methylene blue, it's just blue food dye. I'm going to put one drop into my solution, give it a stir, make sure my lens is over the solution, and start my stopwatch. Okay, so every 15 seconds I'm going to be looking, and I can just focus on my screen here on the cell phone, and if we're looking at the red value, clearly the red value has decreased significantly because it's turned blue. My first value at 15 seconds is going to be 86. I will record 86 into my data table. Keeping an eye on the time, keeping an eye on the readout here, we can see that it is losing its blue intensity and is becoming more red. And the next value is now 105 for 30 seconds. Clearly the value is going back up to the original red value, which we took a photograph of and is in the memory of the phone. And my next value is now going up to 113. So you can see there is a linear relationship between these values. Continue recording until you have reached the original reading. The next reading is going to be in 21. So now we're at 117. Beautiful. I have only included the quantities of blue dye, water, sodium carbonate, and hydrogen peroxide, purely so you know what uh, quantities, volumes, you should be using. There's quite a wide tolerance on this. If you've got a decent measuring cylinder, that's enough um, accuracy to uh, pursue this experiment. 
the initial red value was the red scan using my cell phone. I did take an image of, of that, and I'll be probably pasting that into my report. If I look into my history, I can see the photographs there. My readings for the red value, which will clearly or have been increasing as the blue has been decreasing, and the absorbance is directly proportional to concentration, of course, uh, these have been ascending here. So these were the readings that we took in the actual experiment. Uh, the times are here, and we can basically ignore all this part of the form now, because I'd like to use the um, area of the screen to actually uh, go, go, so edit, so delete column D, edit. I'm sure there's a quicker way to do this. And uh, I'm sure somebody's screaming at the screen now saying, Mr. Mitchell, honestly, you need to increase your Google Sheet skills. Yes, I do. Okay, so we have the initial red value. Uh, our value, uh, the reading at the time intervals, and we need to now familiarize ourselves with a couple of equations. Now, to work out the absorbance, that's minus log to the base 10 of the absorbance at time t over the absorbance of the red area of the spectrum from the blank. So what I've done here is I've set up the uh, sum to equals minus log 10 b5 over a5 b5, which is the reading of a5, which was the blank from the photograph, which I've taken as evidence. I then dragged and dropped a planet toward those readings, and I now have absorbance at various times. I can now have a look, because absorbance is directly proportional to concentration, I can have a look, I can plot a graph of absorbance against concentration, and, uh, well, absorbance is concentration against the time, forgive me. This graph is quite nice, um, it's a nice uh, linear relationship. If we have a look in the series, we could perhaps add a trend line, see there, and I wonder uh, what the degree of fit is. It's not 0.892, it's not brilliant. This one here is clearly an outlier. When you're doing this experiment, uh, just be careful about the ambient lighting. Um, I found that fluorescent lighting uh, in the background, particularly the boxed kind, is very unstable. Uh, find an area where you have stable light source. Okay, so as we expect, concentration is decreasing linearly in a linear fashion with time. So that's very good. Uh, nice to see. Now what we need to think about is, is this a first zero or second order reaction? Now, the equations for a first order reaction, this one here is the equation for first order. And this one here is if the data fits more a second order situation. So to work out this one, we've got the natural log of di at a particular time, minus natural log of di at time zero, take away constant times time. So what I've done here, I've set that up. So if we take the natural log of the absorbance, natural log of the absorbance, which is in D5, and then extend that down to here, we can have a look whether the data fits first order reaction kinetics. So command and click, find your graph, which is here. Hope we get a scatter plot. That's quite nice. Nice linear relationship. Damn that data point there. But I believe in telling you truthfully what I actually found. Go into series. We can hit the uh, trend line and I can go down. I can hit the R squared value. So for first order kinetics, my R squared value is 0 0.976. So that tells me the degree of fit of the data, 0 0.976 for first order. Very good. So I'll just make a little note of that. First order uh, R squared is 0 0.976. Okay. And I want to check what the data fits for second order. This is the equation for second order kinetics for this experiment. And if I take the reciprocal of the absorbance against time, so there's time, there's the absorbance, and then we can hit our scatter plot, which is up there. 
And now we can see we have a nice linear relationship, as we would expect. We can go to our series in here, and we can just check the trend line. Let's pop that in. Okay. And an R squared value. Let's give us an idea of the degree of fit. For second order kinetics, this has given me 0 0.821. I would, of course, be saving those and popping them into any report that I was making. So that was 0 0.821. So this experiment, this set of experimental results, is telling me that the order with respect to the blue dye is more like, is looking like it is first order. Now, I've done this experiment once, I've been doing it another two times. Because I know from data or from reference that it ought to be second order. But I think it's important to show that everyone can get some spurious data. So record it three times and see where you get to use the R squared value to juggle whether it's first or second order. And what fantastic data processing for your internal assessment. Hope you found this useful. Don't forget, smash that subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.